Hello. Welcome back to book club, you silly freaking gooses. <laughs> we are joined by, I don't know why I just went full NPR for a second. <laughs> and welcome back to book club. Um, today, <laughs> we have Sarah from Sarah Shelves who um, so wonderfully reached out like the second that I announced like the second half of the year's picks was like um low-key can we discuss the center together I was like hell yes absolutely so thank you for being here I'm so excited to talk to you about it I think it's gonna be a good old time thank you for having me this all feels very like formal and official no are you kidding me I'm the least formal person I have a <laughs> you like jazz merch on okay <laughs> like please <laughs> also like, can you hello i'm joined by hello welcome it's because wes for my birthday got me this um mic like boom arm because we've been gaming with some mm -hmm. of our other nerdy couple friends so now i feel like i have this fancy mic and it's gone straight to my head so that's that's the reason <laughs> um did you recently move or reorganize your shelves i recently moved background yes can we get a moment for the bookshelves yes how's it going how's it's, the move it's going you know i don't live alone anymore so that's not fun <laughs> but it's been an adjustment but like i'm just i'm just here you know just vibing just Great. Here, just vibing trying to find my own little space and that is in this corner right here <laughs> i love it i love the like corner is it those like ikea corner shelves yeah i just this is the first time i've actually tried to caddy corner the smaller bookshelf it doesn't fully line up for some reason like there's this gap right there but it's... never would have noticed it's fine. I mean, it's the best I could do. It's it's trying its best, and I love it for that. So yeah, I relate to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The um, hot gossip is that we are also going to be moving this month. We just found out last week that we got approved for the place we wanted, and mm -hmm. uh, suddenly it's all happening so fast. We're like, oh my god, we have to get boxes. We have to start packing shit. Like, did not expect to be moving right now. But now it's about to happen. So that's going to be a good time. I mean, but at least it's a place that you want and not just like you're being kicked out. <laughs> no, yeah. We're like, let's start looking, you know, like we don't want to be like urgently hunting for a place. And then mm -hmm. we found the perfect place. We're like, holy shit. And then we got the place. So now it's like crunch time <laughs> happening. But yeah, good times. Good times. It is best um, to do it all in one go, though, instead of just dragging it out for months. It is stressful either way, but I feel like if you just pack everything in one yeah. week and just move it all at once, it works out better. Yeah, and I think it should be hopefully an easy move. It's not like we have a lot. Like, this mm -hmm. is a pretty small place, so hopefully we can just get it all done and then it'll just be a sprint of a move, but... So that is that is our life currently. That's yeah, exciting. The, and then you have Christmas like right around the corner after that. <laughs> I know. That's what we keep saying. We're like Christmas tree in a new house. Christmas tree in a new house. So that is what we're <laughs> looking forward to. But it'll be a crazy time to get there. Um, Who do we have? Hello. I started reading this today and tried so hard to finish it in time, but ended up as always about 100 pages short. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I read this in the last like 72 hours so it is fresh mm -hmm. same did you do the same <laughs> yes i always wait till like strategically it's not that i'm putting it till last minute i just need to put it as close to whatever live i'm talking about a book on just so i know what i'm talking about and i'm not like oh i don't remember i finished it like two months ago yes agreed see you always validate me i love it <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> I'm like 50 pages away from finishing and just got to the twist. Bro, what a wild, wild ride. Hair, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I chopped my hair off. <laughs> I shocked the hell out of all my coworkers. Like I just came in on Monday one day and like had this haircut. And 
I didn't, it's like, what? I'm not going to like announce to the people, um, Hey office, <laughs> I cut my hair. So every day as people would like walk by my office or come in to ask me anything, it was like, Hey, what's, <laughs> they're like who are you actually one guy in my office fully thought i was a new person and instead of just like saying hey what's up my name is like a dork he was like fishing for gossip from all the other people and was like who's the new hire i didn't see an announcement who did we hire who's that person oh my god and i had to go down the hall and be like are you kidding me <laughs> like it's just me with a haircut oh that's so funny it was awesome I started yesterday to hee hee. It's so quick and the audio is great. It's Steph Babel meets Catherine House. Babel vibes for sure, but I have not read Catherine House. I was going to say it gave Catherine House vibes. It kind of gave me, and I think Jan read this book too for my book club, I want to say, but it kind of gave me Bandit Queens vibes a little bit on like how the characters were interacting and like the the mystery of it all but babble for sure on like the language and translation and everything what was um like what are the catherine house vibes coming through just like you know something's happening behind the scenes but like you don't know what's fully going on like they're in this place together it's all very structured and like talking to a minimum type of thing but you don't, you know, there's something like sinister lying underneath, but you just don't know what it is. Yeah, that definitely is like, you know, th- there's just like such a haunting atmosphere to it. Mm-hmm. It's like, what's going on? What is not being said? What's happening? Yeah. But it comes across as like, oh, it's like a 10 day retreat. And yeah, it, that makes me interested in Catherine House because I didn't, it's one of those that like, I don't know if that would be a book I like or not. But if it's similar in that way, I'm, I might actually pick it up. I think you should. I think you would like it. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> I also haven't read Bunny, which is like so not related, but that's another like mm. kooky book I think I should probably read. I hate Naima. LOL, I'm just going to spew all my thoughts here before spoilers. I'll let you know before spoilers. But yes, what are our thoughts on our main character's best friend? I mean, you know, she's just like all of those. She kind of reminds me of just all those like influencers that are just holier than thou (laughs) type of mindset. And just I'm all about clean living and just you know, I know all type of thing. I don't know. She just was very stereotypical. Yeah. In the way that she's like, let's do a manifestation Mm -hmm. event. And like, I have this client and all he wants to do is like practice being a boyfriend with me, basically. Like, yeah. Interesting. But um, she seems like she struggles with receiving (laughs) like, feedback from people in her lives where it got to a point like girl you need to listen yeah and she kind of just did what she wanted to do (laughs) a lot of the time yeah definitely a very I mean a character who's like yeah but what's in it for me like Mm -hmm. okay girl there are other things happening it just felt very weird that like that was our main character's best friend you know because they're very different they are super different people yeah yeah i get i get what you mean i kept thinking of the the show severance haven't seen the show severance i've seen like the first episode and yeah i can see that as well okay severance like the book or totally different totally different it's a apple tv show where you go to work and like you step past this threshold and you cannot remember anything outside of work like you don't know what your home life is like at all if you are married if you have kids or anything like that it's just work and then when you leave you go past the threshold again and you can't remember anything that happened at work or like anything it's like work-life balance but to the extreme that is wild but it's very interesting now i feel like i'm getting all these other recommendations (laughs) (laughs) like okay i have a show to watch i have more books to read that is what a trip 
Catherine House is super isolated. They took their phones in outside world contact. Ooh, culty. Mm -hmm. I like it. I hated her because she was Delulu when it came to Azim. And it's like, okay, been there, done that. Maybe that's why I hated her. But also she was annoying. Yeah. Um, I know you haven't finished it yet. But her relationship definitely was like tricky. Mm hmm Def read Catherine House with the audio. Good tip. I did mostly read the center on audio as well and felt like it was super well performed. Yeah, I did both. I followed along in the book while listening. And it's very interesting that like certain words, just because like obviously a lot of the stuff is about language and all that, but in the audiobook, there were certain words that weren't the same in the book. Interesting. So I was like, is that on purpose or was the audiobook based off of an earlier draft and this is just the final one and that that's why be. it was changed? But it was just very interesting and I took note of it a couple of times because it just stood out to me and I thought maybe it was intentional. Yeah, like maybe it was the like not quite the last round of edits or something, but um, it could be intentional too. I don't know. Where can I watch it? Apple TV. Nice. Nice, nice. I noticed that too. Hmm. What did you think of um, her first boyfriend who ends up being the one to tell her about the center? Like in like the first like 25% of the book. It's so weird because it was more like... I don't know. It just felt like she wasn't in love with him, right? But like she was. <laughs> and I'm just so confused at the whole thing. Like they were more just together for being together's yeah. sake. But he just felt super bland. And obviously like he... I don't know. I mean, he's like obviously the catalyst to bring her to the center and all that, but he just gave nothing, honestly. Truly, really, like you are such a nothing character other than she's like, wait, you speak 11 fluent languages. Like, how is that possible? He's like, yeah. oh, I just, it's like what I do for work and never tells her until he finally tells her and it's like too late. It's like the whole first chapter or two, which is like them meeting, them dating, and then them going to see her parents finally when they're like talking about getting engaged. Mm -hmm. And then everything blows up when it comes out that he's learned or do. And mm -hmm. she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like you haven't been able to retain a single word that I taught you in our time together. But now suddenly, surprise, you get back from vacation and you speak it better than I do. Like that makes no sense. And he finally, finally tells her. But then it's like, oh, you can only tell one person in your whole life. And it's super secret. And you have to take it seriously. It's like, okay, immediately like unsettling. Like, where is this going? Why is it so secret? What were your immediate like thoughts, reactions, guesses? But I feel like she should have been kind of flattered by that, that he wanted to learn the language, like spending all of this money to learn so he could communicate with her parents. So like, kind of good? <laughs> I guess I felt like, like he just wanted like, the simple like he just wanted to get it and have it done without actually because she had said like I keep trying to teach you like simple phrases but you couldn't even remember my name is yeah. so it's like he hadn't put in any effort before and then he's like I just I know I could like go to the center and like absorb it or learn it or whatever but he didn't do any of the work to actually like understand or learn like the deeper sides of it like there's that whole scene when they're at her parents house and he makes a scene of like bringing his plate to the kitchen and she's like you don't understand and you're not listening as to why like that was an offense like you you shouldn't do that it's my parents house like you aren't listening to like what I'm telling you like the do's and don'ts in my house 
like in my home with my parents and he's like what it's like just bringing a plate to the kitchen but so he feels like he should have all this credit for knowing mm -hmm. the language you know even though it's like what babe like i learned your language and she's like okay <laughs> like, yeah like, but the language is just the language like you don't know the culture and all that stuff so it's like taking shortcuts which i yeah i understand that that's not the way to go about it and it is you know, because people have to learn languages slowly, and it's just, if you can do it like this, why wouldn't you? But yeah, like at what cost? Yeah, like, exactly. And I feel like that's like the theme. I'm not going to quite go into spoilers yet. Also, I know my light is being weird. I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not going to go into like spoilers. But I felt like the theme of the book was like, at what cost do we learn languages or do we translate languages? Um, like, is there consequences and what are they? Um, because, yeah, like the other point of tension while they were like visiting her parents was like everywhere they went, she felt like they were rolling out the red carpet for her white partner who could speak the language and all like handed free stuff in the marketplaces just as like, what an honor it is for you to learn our language. And mm -hmm. he's like, oh, people are so nice. People are so hospitable. And she's like, you don't get it. Like this doesn't happen. This wouldn't happen if someone not white, like was fluently speaking or do as like a non-local, like it's hello. How are you not seeing this? And he's like, no, just people are so nice. And I felt like that was like a point of their relationship too, where she's like, why am I like, why am I putting up with this? Who's he's doing nothing to like really understand. Yeah. Where am I at? uh the long ass chapters jan i totally thought of you because i was listening to the audio so i'm not really paying attention to like where the chapters start and stuff but i remember being at like 30 or 40 percent and it was like chapter five and i had the <laughs> thought of like i know jan hates this <laughs> like, i didn't even notice to be book. honest i just the book isn't that long it's only like three not even 300 pages so i didn't notice it but if it were longer i probably would have noticed the I I think I only noticed it because I knew Jan was reading it and was like, oh, that's going to be a thing. Hello, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you. It's been very fun. Let's try something different. Fabulous question. Fabulous. I just got right into the juicy, juicy shit. What did you rate it? I haven't given it a rating, to be honest. Okay. It's marinating. When it's marinating it? because I don't know if I'm smart enough to give it a rating. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. I mean, it, imposter syndrome aside, what what would be your like a gut rating? My gut rating is a two star. Okay. Okay. But I think I don't like it because I don't fully get it. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what was the reason? But I did really love the writing, but I just felt like not a lot happened. Not a lot happened. I'm so yeah. excited to talk spoilers. <laughs> um, my, I, my rating is... A high four star and I might I might boost it up if I was really like a half half rating person it'd probably be a 4.5 mm, okay. okay but I'm sitting on four for now so then maybe you can convince me to <laughs> rate it higher Jan I'm not spoiling it for you but there there were some things that happened did not love the ending which we'll get we'll get there when we get there but I feel like events events were going on um i'm giving it a five star after that reveal one of my favorite tropes yeah that doesn't surprise me and i'm glad that you're liking it yes you are very smart sarah don't, do, don't second guess yourself <laughs> like that i'm not smart enough to rate this book what <laughs> what who I did you know, believe that it's kind of like me reading a high fantasy book like, why would you put any stake in what I have to say about a high fantasy book? You know? I guess. It doesn't, it doesn't correlate. If somebody would 
if somebody read a lot of that genre, then it would make more sense because they have a lot to compare it to. But in my case, I'm just, this kind of stands in its own certain genre that I don't really know if I have enough to, not that you should compare every book, but have anything to like pull from to give it a good rate. I get, I get I what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm listening. I promise. You just feel like, like you don't have anything to like reference it against. Like it's standing on, it's in its own like subgenre, I guess. Yeah. Cause if I, if I have something kind of similar, which I guess Catherine House would be kind of close ish. But if I had other ones, I'd be like, oh, well, I liked it a little more than this one, but I didn't like it as much as this one. Then it kind of helps me pin down a rating. But when I don't have that, I'm like, uh, you're kind of in a league of your own and I don't know what to do with you. I get that. It's like, is this amazing or was this terrible? Like, I have nothing to contextualize. <laughs> exactly. I gave it a three because I like her past books better. Why did I think this was a debut? What else has she written? I thought this was a debut too. Oh wait, <laughs> who are you thinking of? Now I'm curious, but I think she's written like maybe short stories. But I, I'm pretty sure this was her first novel. Yeah, and I listened to the little Q and A at the end too. And I Me think too. I thought that was super fun. I think she said it was her first. Yeah. I liked what she was saying about like, yeah, I was in a writer's group and it was just like a writer's group of normal people and not these like professional writers. And so mm -hmm. she's like, it was really, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but basically she was like, it was so nice and like healing to have writers who were like, this is great. You should keep going instead of yeah. like really critical professional writers group being like, this is terrible. You should change this. This doesn't mm -hmm. really work. I'm like, I totally could see how that would be really hard to be in a writer's group where you're constantly getting like nitpicked on it's like it's yeah. of course it's supposed to be helpful but I'm like yeah I want like an only positive writer's group that sounds so wonderful a group of cheerleaders just being yes. like yeah you write that paragraph yes you're doing amazing sweetie exactly. the writer's group yes yes um when she finally gets to uh so like okay they get home from visiting her parents and they're like we need to take a break but also I'm gonna check out this like writers or writers <laughs> this language school um and he's like no really it's like pretty pretty serious and you have to take it you know like the privacy thing is super legit and she's like whatever immediately goes and tells Naima <laughs> what were you thinking like is it not that deep or is this like she's already used her one person to tell well I guess I can't tell my answer without spoiling something, so... Okay. Because, like, well, I predicted that something would happen, but, like, it it didn't end up happening. So I can't tell you my prediction, because then it'll, like, give a spoiler as to something that didn't happen. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. But I, again, like, with him, you know, spending all that money to learn Urdu... Isn't it also kind of, <laughs> I'm trying, I, am I an apologist for him? I don't even know. But anyways, <laughs> so he tells her as like his one person to tell it to. So I'm like, you guys seem very not for each other. Did he not have anyone else in his life that he could have told? Like that was his one person he could tell about the center and he chose her. I get where you're, I mean, I think they, they had this like love where, and we kind of get this towards the end too, where she goes and visits him and he had done a lot of work. He's like, I'm going to therapy now. Also, this is the only time you've come to my apartment and we're not yeah. together. Don't you think that's weird? And she's like, huh? Like she has some stuff to work through separately from like the course of the events of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I think he came around to the fact that like they weren't supposed to be together and probably did have some feelings of like, you're the person I told about <laughs> this place. But also his roommate was, I think the guy that either told him about the school or they met because of the school so maybe the other like important person in his life already knew and they had that to bond over. But I felt like, yeah, if you were going to break up, it was like a 
interesting way to like spend your one invite or one recommendation but i feel like it made sense because they were still in the place of like how did he say it it was like you can't be mad that i didn't tell you yet when he first told her and she's like no but tell me anyway um it was like a last attempt at like them staying together was like well, i'm gonna tell the secret and that'll fix everything and yeah. then it just didn't but it was out there but on her end, it seemed like she was wanting them to be together forever because that's just kind of, kind of how her brain worked. Like, oh, well, since it hasn't worked out with anyone else, I guess this is it. But then, as you were saying, towards the end when he is saying, like, you've never even come to my apartment. So it seems like he was more one foot out than she was because she was like oh we're gonna like be together and be married and all that and he was like what how could that happen when you don't even put in the effort in this way and then she's gonna be the one person he tells it just didn't correlate for me like you feel like that felt convenient that it was like she learned about the school from him like not thinking about his perspective of like how he would want to spend that invite i guess yeah okay yeah i could see i think if you if he was like worried about like growing my social circle or like building my legacy of like the people that i want to go to the school i don't know i felt like i guess i didn't think about it that much i was like yeah he's gonna recommend her and i just was like yeah that checks out but i get i get what you're with her job too like she's already a translator so it makes sense right because it's still in the same like it could benefit her in her job yeah he's probably like yeah good <laughs> thinking he's doing her a favor is like you're welcome <laughs> yeah i've given you this information this invite uh what a time but also um, where did his money come from because he went there multiple times and it's twenty thousand dollars i mean probably from all of his like translation gigs like if he went the first time then you know he can make it back on translation like even the scene where they meet in like the first chapter he's like in several different phone calls in several different languages it's like yeah okay you can make like really good money that way i guess i just think too deep into it because i'm like why would you have a roommate if you had all this money to spend on learning other languages like why wouldn't you have a house by yourself why do you have a roommate if you have twenty thousand dollars to drop at the literal second that you want to learn another language? I get where her money came from because she's like family wealth or whatever. But I mean, I think the person he lived with was like the other guy from the school, so they might have just been like, "We're buddies, let's live together." But I get, I get what you're saying. It's like, why? <laughs> where is all your wealth? I don't know. Let's... He doesn't want to flex on everyone. He just <laughs> he stays humble. I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> oh, let's start talking some spoilers about the center. Um, when she first gets there and she's talking to these doctors and there's like the skull on the desk and she meets her mentor and is like walking around at what point did you start to think like something something weird is going on or did you have predictions of what the secret to this language learning was i didn't really have any predictions i mean i did take note of the skull because it is the cover of the book so i was like oh okay that's where it's from and just she was like, oh, is that real? And they're like, yeah, the plants are real. And I'm like, she's definitely not talking about the plants. We all know she's not talking about the plants. It's the skull yeah. that she wants to know. Yeah, that was definitely, like, unsettling. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I mean, and she even says, like, was that an intentional, like, deflection? Like, why wouldn't you just, if it was nothing to be worried about, why wouldn't you say, oh, it's a real skull? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, no, it's fake. Like, it was just a funny detail to include. Like, aren't you suspicious yet? Yeah, it was just weird. I took note of it because I was like, okay, well, I definitely know this isn't going to be all sunshine and rainbows. 
<laughs> something's up. <laughs> hmm. Isn't this so categorized as like what is the the genre of it? I thought it was like more in the horror genre, but I'm unsure of that. I would call it dark academia, kinda. But also, I mean, the author calls it body horror in mm-hmm. the in the Q and A, which is like you only really get the horror at the end of the book. We're talking like full spoilers now for anyone that hasn't finished it. Um, PSA, <laughs> <laughs> but just like once she has that realization of like, oh, the secret is that we are literally consuming the storytellers and she has to be the one to say like in that group of old men that like run the place she's finally the one that's like so it's cannibalism like just just say that and they're like oh well you know you don't have to call it that like the like gut drop where she realizes oh my god I've I've eaten two people and like I didn't I didn't know is like that's such crazy body horror but you don't it's like weird to call the book that because it's kind of spoilery like I felt like if I'd gone in knowing it's body horror Mm -hmm. that would have been a giveaway you know I guess (laughs) you're like I so disagree I just don't want to know tell me what you I mean I just I get that the twist happened right and like they're consuming them, but I'm just confused as to what that entirely means. Like, they're eating them. Like, the whole, like, um, meditations that Sheba is, like, trying to do with her to be, like, slowly trying to get her on, like, the same wavelength of, like, see, this is why it works. It's not just <laughs> eating people. Um, they're trying to say that, like, listening to the person's life story in their, like, native language um, from start to finish while consuming that person in every single one of your meals and doing nothing else is like, oh, how do they say it? It's like you are, do they literally say consuming? You're, like, absorbing their life force. And, like, you will continue to have their dreams and pick up on things from their lives like she keeps having dreams from the first guy that she learned german from and um it's like a way for the storytellers to like live on is like passing their Mm -hmm. like life force to these learners like five learners per storyteller um so they were saying like oh it's like this like holistic process of like listening to your story from start to finish in your language consuming you know the the literal flesh and then also just like the isolation like the mental meditation of it of like doing nothing but those things I think was why they were so worried about like distraction or having your phone or anything so that allegedly Mm -hmm. you can just absorb but there is definitely this element of like suspend your disbelief they can magically learn this language by eating this person's body like uh, yeah it's like pretty out there but i think that was what they're going for is like eating them like this like literal consumption of their of their life of their story well you noticed that earlier i said maybe i was too dumb for this book no i totally missed that part that like tiny little detail that they were eating them i knew that they were listening to them and like having all of their dreams and whatever i missed the eating them part like i knew she was being drugged because i remember that part but i do not remember them explicitly stating that they were consuming them like actually so like the wait hold on so the the big reveal of the book was what in your mind was that basically like their life force just came into them through their words and then they just it's cannibalism and then they died because you know they're consuming their life force so the life force is no longer with them oh that's actually hilarious yes um that was the horror part is they're they're eating people to gain the language 
Okay, well, now it makes more sense. Now it makes more sense. I love it. I love it. There was that part where she finds out she was drugged Mm -hmm. because she goes into, like, the lab or whatever and is like, oh, I just don't have that memory. And her friend Naima is like, that's weird. We can get that memory back. Drink this tea. And then she has that vision of, like, seeing the human leg on a meat hook. Is this ringing any bells? No. (laughs) What? Not at all. I literally was... and I wasn't doing anything else but reading this book. Like, literally page open for 100% of it. I do not remember any of that happening. Like, am I missing pages in my book? I I don't know. That's so funny to me. I love I love that you're like nothing happened. Oh wait, they were eating people? Okay. Well, because then like later on when she gets to meet um what's her name's dad who created the center and I my buzzword that I like dropped on, which I guess was like right after all of this occurred, was sexual cannibalism. Which is, like, the thing that they said. And then they were like, oh, that's a joke, blah, blah, blah. And then I was just like, okay. That is, like, the scene. Like, three lines before that. They're like, That's what I'm saying. Maybe I just, like, did not pay attention to that. Because I just remember those two words being said. And then I was like, wait, what? So, whatever. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Yes. So that, I mean, if there wasn't the cannibalism element, I could see how it'd be like, what was the point? like what was what was the book but with knowing like after it's already done like oh yeah i can speak russian and german now but like at the cost of having literally consumed two human bodies is so fucking wild so Mm -hmm. fucking wild but i think that was like what and what the author was talking about in her q a too is like there is always something lost um in any active translation which is like a huge theme in Babel also which I know you said you haven't read but there's always like there's always this like some kind of lost meaning Mm -hmm. in translation and Babel goes so far as to say any active translation is violence is aggression like taking it away from what it was supposed to be and who it was supposed to be for um, and so I felt like it was such an interesting way to like unpack and frame translation and language learning. Like, it, uh, and especially from Adam, like her ex being like, I learned so many languages, but having no interest or even realizing that if you're learning a culture's language, you should probably learn more than just the language. He's like, no, I just learned languages. I felt like that's what the book was going for. It's like, yeah. If you're going to learn it, you have to learn it. And also it might just not be for you, um, which is something the author talked about too. Like just the the process of writing the book being like, I know that there's going to be words in there from Urdu and I don't want people to feel like, oh, let me go look that up real quick because if you don't know them, it might just not be for you. And that's fine. And people need to be fine with that. It was just like, oh yeah. I did knew. think that was interesting because she, she was exactly saying like not saying. everything deserves to be translated or like stuff like that. And I just felt like it made a lot of sense. I don't know. Yeah, I loved it. I loved the way that she framed all of that. Is like, I wrote the book and then I kind of also hinted at the book being within the book. Did you, what did you think of that? part where um, Naima is trying to convince her to tell the story in a novel. I, again, like, I was so detached by it by that point that I just did not, like, I'm just confused at how it ended. I thought, so earlier when you were asking about uh, Naima, is that how you say her name? I don't know. The audiobook was saying Naima. Naima. I thought that because she had just, like, spilled the beans to her right away that she was going to die. And then that didn't end up happening. But, like, she didn't need to tell anyone else. So it made sense. But I don't know. Did the end happen? Like, she's now one of the people that's going to be consumed? 
that's the thing is like the ending was pretty i mean i like an open ending but it was a little it was a little too open for me is yeah. was kind of my like last little missing star it was like it was so close to perfection for me but um her like when she came back from that trip with Sheba, where she has the big reveal and she's like i can't believe this is happening <laughs> one i'm going vegetarian two like i need no association with this place like people have to know we have to tell people but i like signed all this paperwork and naima is like well just like change all of the details and write a novel oh but your novel needs an ending you know what the ending should be like bollywood style just make the ending my wedding and then like they're talking about her like the novel within the novel ending at her wedding but then this novel ends at naima's wedding so then there's that extra layer like extra meta level of like wait is this the novel within the like what's going on that's where i had this trip of like oh, what just happened <laughs> like is this the book they were talking about mm -hmm. but the open ending for me was like sheba comes back and says hey david died who was one of like the four people like one of the friends of her dad who started the center who had recorded his whole life story and they framed it like being an organ donor like when they die yeah. they want to go through the center like they he want was, to this is what his wishes were like this is what he wanted he, he wanted us to consume him and so she sheba is like pitching this to anisa to be like it's what he would have wanted you have to come consume him with us and like that's the end of the book like we don't know I like it's not said like Anissa's answer of either like a okay it's what he wanted or an absolutely not I'm literally vegetarian now like it <laughs> like I just I needed a little bit more direction of like are you did you write the book did you turn around and become you know buddies with Sheba again because Sheba's whole thing is like yeah you don't think I know what I'm involved in like give me a little bit of faith like I'm trying to take over and then we can change it from within. And Anissa is like, I kind of think you're full of shit, but I don't feel like we got that resolution. Like it just ended at Naima's wedding. Mm -hmm. Like they said it would. And that kind of threw me for a loop. But there was a moment that makes me think it was like the book within the book type of thing. Because when she's talking about being alone with uh, the dad, the, guy, the creator of the center. Yeah. She's like, there's one scenario where when he pushes my head down, this thing happens. And then there's yeah. one where it doesn't. But then she kind of like leaves it up to you to decide which one happened. But then as you're reading, she kind of hints that it didn't. But then there's other like things in there where he is saying, oh, are we all good? Like, was that fine? And then you're like, so it did happen? but you're, you're right that it didn't so it's like both things are happening at the same exact time you're right that was a really interesting choice of like either she changed that or something in the book within a book it was yeah. interesting like disorienting because i don't feel like there was any other moments like that in mm -hmm. the book where it was like mm, one of these happened yeah it's like you decide choose your own what? adventure <laughs> which one is it that's so wild but i feel like it I mean, she even said something in that scene of like, I I feel disoriented. And I don't know if she drank too much or if he drugged her. Because afterwards, um, Sheba found her and was like, whoa, like, what's up with you? Mm -hmm. And she must have just been drinking. But it seemed out of character for her to have gone that far. So I thought it was like, did he put something in her drink and made her not fully remember what happened? So if she's questioning, like, did this happen or not? It was yeah. that scene was really really wild. What? A, then what a even Shiba was like, "Oh, just don't spend any more alone time with my dad." Like, kind of pointing at the fact that like maybe he's done something like this before. And I'm, I don't know. Yeah, it was super super uncomfy. Like, what you like weird old man? And then it's like threatening her. Like, we already made you sign the paperwork, but like, you know, if there's anything we can do to sweeten the deal for you to not tell people that we're eating people that would be great and she's like actually i'm just gonna go <laughs> uh thanks though like what a creep you're such a weirdo 
but yeah and the whole time they're there they're just like treating Shiba and Anissa like these like clueless little girls mm -hmm. and Anissa is like constantly picking up on it and is like does Shiba really not see this or is she not bothered by it like because Shiba feels like she's in control like she knows what's going on at the center she's in charge she's taking it down from within and yeah. um Anissa has to tell her like no they like drugged me and took my memories away when I broke into the the staff room or whatever and she was like didn't know that totally thought I was in charge I was in control and that's freaky so she has this moment too of like I guess I can't I'm not as in charge as I thought I was which is also a fun realization yeah and there's this one uh moment that I annotated I was looking for it but where there were her and Shiba were talking and she was like, you shouldn't even want it. It's covered in blood, that seat. Like, you shouldn't want that seat yes. because it's covered in blood. And then she says, I thought you of all people would understand. Anissa, I have to own my life completely. If there's any hope for transformation, that's where it lies. Don't you get it? Even if the seat is covered with blood, if it's being left to me, I'll be able to clean it. And I was like, damn, <laughs> but you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know she's if you want to clean it. In. Yeah, like she feels like I could take, I could take the cult down from the inside, but it's like, I don't, like, can, can you? Like, is there, can you really come back from not having told people that they're eating people? I don't know. That was like Anissa's whole thing is like, I, if you're going to do it and the storytellers are consenting allegedly mm -hmm. to what they're doing, they're recording their story. They know that they're giving their body to use of the center, but not all of them know that they're giving their body to be eaten by participants of the center. So like the storytellers consent in a way, but the learners <laughs> are not necessarily uh, aware at all of what's going on. And so Anissa was like, what if you like just told people and they're like, Oh, it's more complicated than that. Like, okay. Is it though? I don't know. Yeah. I knew something weird was going on when they were like, Oh yeah, she's not feeling well. Like she's in the hospital. <laughs> Anna's in the hospital. Yes. I was like, and then Peter, like, no, he he's dead <laughs> i was like wait a second yeah that scene where she's there the first time and she's having her moment and anna is like comforting her and she has this like really sweet moment with anna and anna's like oh peter don't take his pain and it's like what does what, what does that mean what do you mean <laughs> okay you're like okay sure <laughs> okay I'll try not to. <laughs> got it thanks <laughs> Oh man, what have we have we talked about everything? What else is on your brain? I also took note of something else um, about like the menstrual blood. Forgot about that. That I thought that was interesting, but I guess it makes parallels to the whole theme of the book in some ways, like giving back to the earth, like putting in nutrients to make it grow like that type of thing and then putting other people <laughs> speak the language into you to make you grow <laughs> i don't it was like an interesting detail to include i don't know if it was like i don't know like we was that scene 100 percent necessary not sure but i get <laughs> where it was going i don't even know where it happened but i just thought it was interesting because apparently According to the book, there is research that it does help, like, fertilize. And I was going to look into it. Oh, my gosh. There was that moment where oh, she's, like, in the garden or something and is asking one of the people that works there, like, what's the secret? Like, your garden always looks so good. And he says, good fertilizer. And oh, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, "What? that was a creepy thing to say. But... <laughs> <laughs> but or i don't like, think we know like i don't think everyone knows there? no it's like probably just the scientists in the kitchen oh why did they measure her skull i guess to see how good of a pot it would make 
how many flowers can we fit in this? Yeah, because that was another moment where I was like, they want to measure her skull? What? Yeah. Because she was thinking maybe it's because, you know, people joke that your brain gets bigger the more you learn. And I was like, okay, maybe they're going to, it's scientific. They're just going to measure it now. And then when she learns the new language, see if her skull gets bigger to account for a bigger brain. And that's... I don't know. I thought that was, I don't feel like that ever really came around again. I could be wrong. Mm -mm. Like, why? That was like such a... Maybe it was just for like the creepy, unsettling vibes. I don't know. Probably. Could be. Wow. What what a wild ride. I feel like, is there anything I'm forgetting? Oh, wait, I found it. Okay. I admired the thriving plants behind her, and she told me that every month she'd pour her menstrual cups into a jug of water, and then at the end of the week, she would water her plants with that mixture. It's the stem cells. That's why these babies are so lush, you see, in fact. They say if you feed your stem cells to the fruit and veg you're growing, the food will actually change composition, tailoring its nutrients, especially for you. Isn't that amazing? Oh, like, that does tie to the yeah. You're right. A little bit of foreshadowing. Wow. I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah. There's like, because she comments several times about like the food is so delicious the food here is so good and there's even one time where she like is telling Sheba about this dish from her childhood like from her grandmother or something that's Mm -hmm. like a nostalgic dish she would eat at home and then like the next day or that night it's like the dish that's served to her from the kitchen and she's like oh this is so amazing and it's just wild to realize that everything that she was fed was from the people's bodies whose stories she was listening to. Mm-hmm. And now me knowing that finally. <laughs> yeah, well, the the body horror part of the story, yeah. Yeah, so that does give more context to why this is kind of c- categorized as horror. Because, yeah, I finished it and I was like, but what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that wasn't scary. <laughs> There was nothing horrific about that. They were just, you know, absorbing their souls. What do you mean? Oh, my. Yes. And their flesh. Oh, that is so funny. Wow. Well, thanks for being on book club with me again. Thanks for having me. Always a delight. I know the last book we read was also kind of horror that I don't mm-hmm. think you really liked either. Patricia wants to cuddle. I did like that one. I don't remember what I rated it, but it was like 3.5, I think. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe we felt similarly. I think I gave that a 4, too. <sighs> well, you're always welcome. What a what a time. Um, and what are we doing next? Oh, November, our book pick is People Collide by Isle McElroy, which is kind of a... Um, soft take on Freaky Friday except it's like a husband and wife whose bodies switch and also unpacks like gender identity um, as well. Isle McElroy um, is trans and their first book was The Atmospherians which I also loved and recommend all the time so I'm excited to read this next book Um, and the cover is really cool too. It's kind of a trip. It's just like painting Anyways, that's November's read. And then December is Travis Baldry's prequel. What's it called? Something Bookshops. Bookshop and Bone Dust? Bookshops and Bone Dust. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. prequel to the coffee book. Legends and Lattes. That's why I keep you around. I'm like, I really can't think right now. Um, Yeah, so that's Silly Goose Book Club for the rest of the year. And uh, I will see you next time. Thank you, Sarah, for hanging out with me. And I hope you have a fabulous rest of your Sunday. Do you have anything you would like to plug to the people before we go? Um, if you want to join Sugar and Spice Book Club this month, we're reading the newest book in the Chestnut Spring series, Hopeless by Elsie Silver. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> fabulous. So, sounds like a fun time. <laughs> horse girl romance baby so romance all right i will see you later love you bye